how's it going everybody? It is Josh here from the BitBlock and I decided to do this little follow-up video to my previous video where I discussed how disappointed I am in some of the uh, some of the decisions being made for Splatoon 2. I'm not going to go into detail about what I said in that video. You can feel free to watch it. I really just want to get right to the point. But I will say, um, what I talked about was, in case you didn't hear, the producer or one of the directors on Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo Switch had an interview recently with a Japanese magazine, and they said that the, the way that you select a level, the way that you decide what levels, what maps you're going to be playing in Splatoon 2 is similar to the first game, except instead of having to wait four hours for new maps in the, rota in the rotation, you now have to wait two hours. So it's, uh, you know, about two hours less, basically. But it's still... The problem still remains, in my opinion. You still have two hours of playing two maps. I think that's unacceptable. I think it's ridiculous. Now, the reason they're doing this is because they believe that players are going to select certain weapons for certain maps. I said I don't really agree with this. I think most people just use the weapons they're most comfortable with, and that's that. But I will concede, and I will say, let's say about half the people actually do play that way. So... Let's come up with a solution that is going to please people like me who want to play a larger variety of maps in a short time period and want the ability to select the maps and not play the same two maps over and over again for hours on end and the people who do want to know what they're getting into. The people who say, no, I do select weapons based on certain maps, so I need to know that ahead of time. Here's the setup I have concocted here. Follow me on this. I would say do this. You go into the, you're in the plaza, you're walking around the plaza, you decide, I want to play a game. So you walk into that magical building that transports you to one of the matches. You can pick between ranked matches or the turf war thing. Let's say we're just going to go into a basic turf war, right? So I click turf war. From there, it starts looking, it's online, and it's looking for people who, to join me. Random people across the world, their little names start sliding into the screen. And once we get enough of them, we then open up a screen, and a screen just appears, it comes up, where we can pick four different maps, okay? And they are randomized every time we're about to play a new battle. It just totally picks four random maps, okay? So I then have five seconds. Everybody has five seconds to pick one. If you don't pick one, it's just gonna leave you out, okay? You don't get to pick. So five seconds, very easy to do in five seconds. There's just four little things. You slide it over, boom, you pick A. So we've now all picked the map. Only five seconds has gone by, so we haven't been waiting too long. From here, now that we know where we're going, it, obviously it's gonna randomize it. Everybody picks and it goes beep, 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 bing. And it says, okay, we're going to the skate park. All right, we're going to the skate park. I don't wanna use a roller for the skate park. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna use a charger for the skate park this time. So then it brings after the level sucked it. It shows me all the weapons that I have. It brings up another little screen, about half of the half of the screen, and it shows me all the weapons I have. I can cycle through them, and let's say I have ten to twelve seconds. Everybody gets about ten seconds after the map has been picked to select their weaponry, maybe swap out their gear, and you can do this manually just through the screen or you can have some presets saved. Now, one of the ways you can do this is of course, assign the presets to your amiibo. Now this is something that's already a part of Splatoon 2. You just tap your amiibo and then your gear and your weaponry will be saved to the amiibo. They instantly load up so you don't have to keep changing it around. It's a pretty cool idea. Um, I would argue that that should just be in the game. I'm not really sure why that needs to be tied to an amiibo. I think that's a pretty important piece of functionality. I wouldn't have tied it to an amiibo, but whatever. So let's, and by the way, there are 10 amiibos. So that should mean that you should have 10 presets. So if you don't want to manually do that every time, just tap your amiibo. Okay, we're going to the skate park. Um, I'm going to want the charger. I know that this amiibo is my charger preset. Boom, I got my charger stuff. I'm ready to go. Um, so that's one option. But I would also say that it seems logical to just have buttons, just have little preset buttons at this screen to where I can say, okay, this is my charger, this is my splatter shot, this is my roller. Just go to the presets. Let us save like four presets into the game. That'll allow us to quickly change our weapons based on the level that was just picked. From there, the 10 seconds is up. It loads us into the match. We have fun. We play it for three minutes, I believe it is. And then once that three minutes is up, Judd decides who's the winner. He does his cute little dance along with Judd Jr. And then uh, we come back to this screen again. Everybody comes back into the lobby. It gives us four more maps, totally different maps than what were there before. Maybe, you know, some of them will re-pop up, but it's a different randomization of maps. We get to pick again, five seconds. After that, 
10 seconds, pick which loadout you want for that map that was just selected, and there you go. I don't see why this isn't the solution they went with, because this would please both audiences. It would please people like me, who want to stay fresh and play multiple levels in a 30 minute time span. Like in 30 minutes, I'd be able to play, what? Like at least five, six, maybe seven matches of totally different maps. And for the people who like knowing what maps you're getting into because you like to strategically pick your weapons, well, good news, because you can do that. It happens after you, pick the, uh, after you pick the map. So it's the best of both worlds. Both sides win. In fact, it's funny because the current setup, I don't think actually does help people decide which weapon to use for the maps. Because right now, it's like um, every two hours, there will be two maps that are being played in, uh, in the Turf Wars, okay? So let's say, I'm just gonna use old maps as an example. Let's say it's Walleye Warehouse and the Skate Park. Well, let's say I don't really like using the roller in the Skate Park, but I wanna use the roller from Walleye Warehouse but it's randomized which ones of those I'm gonna play. I don't really know which one I'm about to play. So let's say, all right, I wanna use the roller. Oh crap, it just selected the skate park, but I didn't wanna use the roller in the skate park. Oh well, I guess I'll just play through this and make do with it and see what I can do. All right, that's over, we lost because I didn't wanna use the, the roller in the skate park, but I had no control over that. Hopefully we don't get the skate park again. Oh, we're going back to the skate park. Because as memory serves, you can play the same map more than once in a row. Like you can play it twice in a row, even three times in a row. So what I'm getting at here is even with Nintendo's logic of saying, yeah, but this way makes it so that players can decide what weapons they're going to use based on the maps. Not really, because even though there are only two maps, they're not going to be... Uh, useful for the weapons that you might pick because you don't know which one it's going to be. So there's still a problem there. And I think the solution that I presented about a minute ago is the true solution to this problem, pleases both audiences, and I think it'd be pretty great. And like I said, save your presets to your Amiibo, tap it real quick on that screen, bada bing, bada boom, you're ready to go in a matter of like two or three seconds. And uh, even, even if you didn't want to do that, just have presets in the game on the menu screen. That should be an option. And even if you don't have that, it's pretty easy to just go through the weapons real quick in a matter of like five, six, seven seconds and pick them. And to anybody who's gonna say, oh, that would take a long time though, not really. I mean, Splatoon's load screen already takes a long time. Uh, they even have you playing little games on the gamepad, so I really don't think this would increase the time. If anything, having that strict time limit would get people going. Hey, five seconds to pick, to pick the map. All right, five seconds is done. 10 seconds now to pick your, your loadout and your gear. All right, that's done. So really it's about 15 seconds to do all that, maybe five seconds with the actual loading. It's about 20 seconds to get back into a match. I think that's quicker than the original game. So let me know what you think. Would that please you? Uh, I don't personally see how there would be any problem with that, but uh, who knows? Maybe I overlooked something. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I wanted to do this little follow-up because I felt like it was... N it it felt like there really wasn't a real solution presented in that, in that first video that I just did, and it would be better to kind of present a solution that uh, would please both sides of the audience. So let me know. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. This little, it's not really little. I just realized it's at like almost eight and a half minutes. I wanted this to be like six minutes, but all right. Keep it locked right here to the BitBlock for a lot more uh, chit chat about Nintendo. And until next time, I will see you guys later.